Good morning and welcome. Today is Sunday, May 9th, 2021. I welcome you to Sunday worship here for Northminster United Church. Today is also Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to those who are who are celebrating today, um, doing some remembering today. We we hold all of you, each and every one of us in this day, close in prayer. Let us pause in our moment of worship to give thanks that we uh, have the blessing of living, working, worshiping, and playing on Treaty 7 land and recognizing those who have been stewards of this land for generations before us. And our Christ candle is lit. This light guides us. And wherever we may be worshiping from, with this light, let us worship with all our hearts, all our souls, all our minds, and with all our strength, giving thanks for the one who made us. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. Let all creation break forth into praises for this our awesome God. Let all creation break forth into praises of this our loving Christ. And let all creation break forth in praises of this our enlivening spirit. Psalm 98 says, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises with the lyre and the sound of the melody. With trumpets and sounds of the horn, make a joyful noise before the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. With these joyful words this morning on this cool and cloudy day, this is the call that the sun breaks through the clouds, and we know that God is alive and at work in us. And when rain comes, we still open our umbrellas and we set out anyway. Let's pray. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, let us be open to learn from the dances of others. Open us to new steps for a new day. Come and dance with us. Engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen.
we're continue our, uh, continuing our time together talking about dreamers in this season. And our dreamer for today is someone you would have seen and heard on television at the end of January this year and a lot since. Her name is Amanda Gorman. And she is a writer and a poet. And she was the young woman who spoke so eloquently at President Biden's inauguration. Amanda Gorman has so many dreams. She dreams of a new world of, of justice and of diversity and, and of love. And she uses the gift of her words to share her message. In the poem that she read that day in January in Washington, D.C., she says that she dreams, and I'm going to read some of these words and not nearly um, as well as she spoke, spoke her, her thoughts that day. She says she dreams of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president of a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of humanity. We know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. Scripture tells us, she says, to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Important words, aren't they? Did, did you notice what Amanda said there at the end of her poem? She said that the light, so the light that is all things we dream of for our world, so goodness and love and justice, she said that light will be there if we are brave enough to, if we are brave enough to see it, we have to acknowledge it, and if we are brave enough to be it. So the question then for us today is about whether we will act on our dreams. Will we act on our dreams that we can do everything to make the world kinder and a more loving place? Our colorful umbrellas are a sign of just that, a sign of hope and a sign of joy even on rainy days, even when we feel we might not have a lot of hope for what's going on. We've been adding phrases to our umbrella throughout the season from our dreamers that we've been listening to. And so today I want us to add a, um, another phrase, this one inspired by Amanda Gorman. And the words let's, let's write down today are, be a light, be a light we are brave enough to see it and be it. Be a, I'm going to write light as big as I can. Light. Be a light. There we go. Be a light. Let's share together in a prayer. If you can repeat after me, please do so. We offer thanks for dreamers true, for all they are and all they do. Let us become dreamers too and bring new life to me and you. Amen. Our first reading for May the 9th is from John, chapter 15, selected verses. Jesus said, As God has loved me, so I love you. Abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends 
if, I, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. Our second reading this morning is from Acts 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. I was thinking these last few days about friends, certainly because in our passage today, the first reading that Shirley shared with us, it speaks about his disciples as friends in this week's gospel. Maybe I talk about or I'm thinking about friends more too because we have had so many restrictions in place for so long and they're even a bit tighter right now all of a sudden. And so our social circle is getting smaller than it even has been before as we seek to, and it's important, as we seek to keep each other safe and healthy in these times. Remember the conversations that we used to have in person? Do you remember those times? Maybe talking in line at Tim Hortons or Starbucks with someone while we waited for our coffees, just chatting closely with whoever was in line too. Or picking through the produce at the grocery store and making conversation with someone about the weather or what recipe you were going to be cooking. Or maybe when you'd meet with your friends at uh, a Saturday morning breakfast, maybe at Denny's or somewhere like that. Or even, how about, how about lunch after church on a Sunday? We're missing those times with friends for sure. Maybe you're missing having a visit with a coworker on a lunch break, going for a walk together. Or it's those times we're thinking of when we used to take our kids and grandkids to the movies and sit together and share a bag of popcorn and watch and enjoy the movie together. How about conversations on airplanes? Do you remember those? I'm really missing those opportunities for travel. Honestly, I think about those times traveling with my family and we'd rush to get on the plane and we'd stash our carry-on and settle everyone in, buckle up, watch the safety demonstration, the TV starts playing, we watch our movies and we kind of just would stick to ourselves though. We wouldn't say a lot to each other or people, I mean, we wouldn't say a lot to people around us but maybe to each other, just talking about the things we were looking forward to about the destination. And, you know, if I was traveling alone, like to a conference, uh, I'd usually do the same. I'd pretty much just stick to myself. Settle in, put in my earbuds, open up my book, or even fall asleep. I have a great way of falling asleep even before takeoff. But I'd always try to sit in the window seat, against the wall, just keep to myself, enjoy a few quiet hours. A commentator I often read, she said the same thing. She said when she gets on a flight, she tries to just stick to herself, go to the window seat, stay in the corner, and she's learned over the years to never divulge her profession if someone asks for fear of that whole flight then becoming a counseling session for the other passenger in her row. Or maybe because the other passenger here, she's a minister, and then start, started, starts, it, she says, complaining the entire flight about their negative views of Christianity and the institutional church. I have had that happen. It's not pleasant. <laughs> and so I'm just like her. I'm very careful to say what I do on an airplane if someone asks me. Anyways, so Janet, this commentator, she recalled this time that she was boarding a plane 
book in hand, ready to go to her favorite window seat. And just as she was settling in, she noticed another couple come, coming down the aisle and they were traveling together and she noticed that they didn't have seats side by side. And so she offered to switch seats with them. She ended up one row back in the middle seat. Never pleasant. <laughs> Janet said she did well with her book. She said she really tried and she actually didn't engage with her fellow seatmate the entire flight, except maybe to tap the woman on the, on the shoulder and say that the flight attendant was there to get her drink order. But at the end of the flight, as they were waiting for all the passengers ahead of them to, to move and leave their, their seats up the aisle, this woman next to her who was in that window seat sheepishly pulls out this grocery bag from underneath and there's hot dog buns in it. And I guess she noticed that Janet had this inquisitive look on her face and she says, well, she says she was traveling to see her sister and it's her sister's 60th birthday and there was nothing else she wanted more than the special hot dog buns that had the cut in the top instead of in the side. <laughs> Just a simple request. And so she was on a way to see her sister and take her these hot dog buns. This woman she was sitting next to had this New England accent, which Janet picked up on right away. And so she mentioned that her own dad had roots in that area of the country. So from there, the conversation went to cousins who live near Boston and an elderly grandmother in a nursing home in the area and a friend who has a precious sea glass collection. She says it was this utterly easy and yet so unexpected rich conversation that they shared in just those few minutes before getting off the plane that, that she shared with a complete stranger. And she found herself after wondering if given the chance to really get to know each other, that they might just be friends. So I find myself wondering that same thing about, about things that, what is it that makes people friends? What leaves us feeling really closely connected to some people and just, just acquaintances for others? What, what is it that, that draws us together? What do you think? Do you think it's like common values, um, maybe a shared sense of humor or a shared history of some kind, um, similar worldview? Do you have to be of a certain age to connect? Is it just that you find that you find yourself sharing a common time and a place and then it's just merely convenient to be friends with that person because they live next door and you're always out having your morning coffee on the front porch? Or is it maybe a, a combination of all these things? Today, Jesus calls his disciples friends. At least in John's telling, this, his criteria, I think, for what makes a friend a friend has a few, a few points to make this connection happen. First, Jesus' friends are those who love one another, it says. His friends are people who act in service to him and each other. There's that sense of, of, of sharing, of serving one another. Um, two, he doesn't leave his friends in the dark. There is a, a shared sense of information or connection because Jesus shares what he knows of God. He shares that. So, so there's a sharing of information, a connection that way of, of what they all know together. And three, and finally, to be maybe Jesus' friends means that he chose us. He chose us to be this. And indeed, we need to remember always, especially in our lowest moments, our darkest times, he chose us long before we chose him. And so I think again of those that we call friends. Likely, our first criteria is, is not that they love others, but although we do, we do appreciate knowing people and having friends in our lives, who do treat others well. We, we appreciate that. We, we value that about our friends. But, but not just whether they love others, but maybe more so 
our first criteria is that they love us. And if we find it in ourselves, then also to reciprocate, reciprocate that same love. So that reciprocity, that connection is really important. Likely another criteria is trust, that you've built that up over time, that we can share what is closest in our hearts and in our lives. Trust is really important for friendship. As for the choosing, well, that's part of friendship too. We choose our friends. But more often than not, I seem to have come up with some of my friends by accident, right? Sometimes we think back to how the, that friendship came to be. It feels like, well, we, got, we, we came to each other by accident. Just like maybe that woman on the airplane in Janet's story. You ended up sitting next to each other on an airplane. Only maybe it's not an accident. I can't help what, but wonder if... If a small, kind gesture like a conversation on an airplane about hot dog buns or anywhere else we encounter people somehow opens us up to receiving kindness in return. Aren't we missing opportunities for those conversations right now? But in today's story from Janet about a cousin and an elderly grandmother and sea glass, a sea glass collection, the dearest part of that woman's life story in just a few short minutes came forth. And it was shared, and then there was this instant connection just because of a very short conversation. One who still she'll most likely never see again, but, but who got her and all of us to thinking about friends. And who knows what sharing happened between the two that even Janet gave up her seat for. Remember, she switched seats for that couple who weren't together. That couple caught her eye again as they were leaving the airplane that day. And although she couldn't see for, say for sure, she said it seemed like their eyes were full of thanks for the kindness that she offered and just having switched seats. It was just such a small thing, that quick impulse to give up her seat for another. And yet, you know, it's something that many of us wouldn't ordinarily do. It's just such a small thing, but maybe it's those small things that can be the beginning of something great, of loving one another as Jesus calls us today. So what difference will such a small gesture do? What might it lead to? That's the message for today's gospel. Loving others, even strangers, in small ways potentially, potentially makes all of our lives richer. And that's not just loving people who are already our friends. It also means loving people that were Jesus' friends. Even and especially people that we might not normally choose to be friends with. That's the challenge. Or people we might not even encounter just because of our demographic, who we are, where we go, what's going on in life which I would imagine is Jesus' intent all along when he spoke about the words that he passed on today. I think that's a lot what church is like, isn't it? Not just loving people we love, but loving people Jesus loves, who are Jesus' friends. That in the church we have this wonderfully diverse body of people who come together because we are friends with Jesus. Not because we have kids on the same sports team or we have teenagers at the same school or because we go to the same golf club or curling club or because we live in the same neighborhood. And it doesn't matter if we were born down the block or if we immigrated to Canada. It doesn't matter if we're single or queer or married 60 years or we're in the midst of a terrible breakup. It doesn't matter if we are employed or if we are retired or if we are unemployed. We are beautifully the church in all of our diversity, not because we are the same, but because Jesus calls us friends. How wonderful is it that we are blessed with that? So just wonder with me, what would happen if we look just 
beyond our friends. Let's look beyond just the people around us. And let's look to Jesus' friends. And even to the strangers we don't know. And if our small gestures grew to larger ones, just imagine what could happen if we did start actually laying down our lives for one another, just as Jesus did. Just imagine that. Let's sing together now our next hymn, This Ancient Love. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to move in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart.
As we now move into our prayers of the people, I invite you to share whatever prayers may be on your mind today and uh, we, so we can read them and, and share them and lift them together. Maybe you also just want to name your, your mom who is still with you or a mom you are remembering um, who is no longer with us. Maybe you want to lift up the name of a friend since we're talking about dear friends today. So, so whether it's prayers or just holding the names of people on our minds today in prayer, please share those names as well. Let us give thanks for these remarkable gifts of God's creating and God's redeeming love, the love that casts out all fears. Let us give thanks for the love that frees us to ask questions and explore, to frame our doubts and investigate new possibilities, to build theories, and then cross-examine them, that we have the minds and the ability to do that. We thank you, God, for adventurous love. For the love that enables us to marvel at our own existence, to ponder and remember, to recognize our own needs and affirm our own knowledge and purpose. We thank you, God of determined love, for the love that helps us to communicate with one another, to express trust and respect, shared heartaches and visions, to convey love and mercy we thank you, God, of reconciling love. For the love that inspires us to warmly encourage those around us, to affirm and build up, to comfort and enlighten. We thank you, God, of nurturing love. For the love that liberates us to celebrate the world around us in poetry and song, to delight in shapes and colors and intricacies and patterns, awesome forces and deep mysteries. We thank you, God of visionary love. For the love that encourages us to express something of our faith, for creeds and prayers, hymns and readings, discussion groups and sermons, we thank you, God of creative love. Some prayers this morning. A prayer of thanks for seeds of hope. For Sue Swam and Rita Swam in Medicine Hat, those prayers from, from Jeremy and Sue. Prayer from Suzanne of gratefulness for her mom, Eugenie Dufour, and Mark's mom, Neva. Phyllis is recognizing how both she and Frank are missing both of their moms who are both in heaven. From Brad, prayer for hope for the kids struggling with new restrictions. Also, prayers for all mothers and mom. From Michelle, to all moms, especially though to her mom, Joanne, and Armella, and to my cousin Chris and co-worker Lori, who are beautiful moms who are mourning their children today. A prayer from Brad for all those struggling on a public day like Mother's Day. For whatever reason, we hold you and pray for you. From Marianne, a prayer of thanks for her mom, Pat, and her mother-in-law, Dawn. A prayer from Dorothy for all the moms out there. And from Tracy for all those who have stepped in as adopted grandmas and aunties for our girls since our families live elsewhere. She gives thanks for that. And from Marcy, a prayer of thanks for Autumn's neighbors who returned home from hospital to be reunited with their baby boy. 
so many prayers. We lift them all to God. We lift ones that may still be shared and, of course, all the ones that we hold and treasure in our hearts. Let's now join our hearts and our voices together in saying the words that, that Jesus taught us. Our Mother and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. me in so many ways. I can't think of a better way to honor you than to make a difference for others. Mother's Day can be more meaningful, it can be more sensitive, it can be more inclusive, it can be more compassionate. It can be more generous. Mother's Day can be more. And that's why when you make a special gift through Mission and Service this Mother's Day, you will directly support families in need in Canada and around the world. You will help provide things like parenting classes, respite care, health clinics, safe shelter, and education to families who need it. And when you make a gift, you can choose to send any one of a variety of free e-cards that I guarantee you, you won't find on the shelves of your local card shop. Give a gift to help families and let someone in your life know they are your inspiration. Together, we can make Mother's Day more. Our joy is complete because Christ, Christ resides within us and calls us friends. We cannot help but break forth with joy 
everything in creation and everyone has the potential to offer new insight. Thank you for your financial gifts, your offering, the ways you give. Your offerings move us forward to new solutions for a new world. Let us pray and bless these gifts. Holy God, we praise you for your love, which is given so freely and so unconditionally. And we thank you for believing in us, that we are your friends and your partners in the world, sharing what we have of our resources, our time, and our abilities. Bless the gifts we offer in your name so that the world and its people will more fully know of your love each and every day. Amen. Now into our announcement time. Um, I always like to remind everyone to please read the Friday emails that come to your inbox. Take time to have a look through all the beautiful images and opportunities available for you or someone in your household or for someone you might know. So please share any of this information you, you, um, you enjoy reading every week. Um, after church today, as usual, is coffee on Zoom. Um, same Zoom link every week. Uh, if you don't have it, though, reach out to me after church and I will make sure you get it. We also are collecting stories. Stories to give us um, some sparks of imagination for perhaps a new building, right, that we are envisioning. What would it look like? What does future ministry look like and future ideas that we might um, share in together? And so I'm asking all of you, please, to, to do this, to reach out to a friend, reach out to a family member, whoever it is, someone you know who goes to church, and ask them for ideas. What do you do with your building? How do you use your building? Who comes into your building? What community, what ways do you connect with the community? What are some great programs and ideas that they have? And then to share them, send them my way. Um, some of these ideas may be pre-COVID, of course, but there's some great stuff happening across the country um, because of COVID as well. So please um, take my request seriously and be thinking of who it is you will reach out to about collecting some stories for us. Stroll for your soul. This is a fun opportunity to get out into our spring weather and uh, enjoy creation and make a bit of walking a spiritual practice for a few weeks. The sign up for this is in your Friday email or we can help you through the office. You will get a wonderful devotion every week in your, e I'm sorry, every day. You'll get a wonderful devotion every morning in your email starting May 19th. You go for a walk and reflect on what it is you read uh, and then collect your kilometers send them to me and we are going to as a whole southern alberta united church see how far how many kilometers we can walk across canada cumulatively so bringing all of our kilometers together it's going to be fun so all the infos in your friday email but please sign up and be part of this fun activity and then we're looking ahead a week or so, about 10 days from now, is our next Beer with God on Zoom to bring your favorite beverage and co connect with um, some of the other men in the congregation for some fellowship time. So please plan to attend that on the 20th. Everything else, enjoy reading in your weekly email. Our blessing, our end of our worship service, to send um, each other out into the world. The poet Haviz said, every child has known God. Not the God of names, not the God of don'ts, but the God who knows only four words and keeps repeating them saying, come dance with me, come dance with me. And may the loving God, the risen Christ, and the dancing spirit fill you with all you need for the days ahead. Amen. Let's go out singing together. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.
must sing this song for the turning of the world that we may turn as one with every voice every song we will move this world along and our lives will feel the echo of our turning with every voice with every song we will move this world along with every voice every song we will move this world along and our lives will feel the echo of our turning let us sing this song for the healing of the world that we may heal as one with every voice every song we will move this world along and our lives will feel the echo of our healing with every voice with every song we will move this world along with every voice every song we will move this world along and our lives will feel the echo of our healing let us sing this song for the loving of the world that we may love as one 